we have John Hansaka, who is, I'm just going to unmute him here. Uh, John, just unmuting you there. But uh, John has been running summits uh, for quite some time now with uh, some uh, great success. <laughs> and it's fantastic to have you on, John, today. And I think everyone that stayed to the end will will find that this will hopefully blow their mind. I think this is really exciting to be talking with John and sharing John's success with everyone that's still here. Uh, John, welcome. Do you want to just uh, introduce uh, yourself a little bit? Sure. Where to start? My name is Jonathan Hunstaker. Done online marketing for almost 15 years now. Um, started in the launch models about seven or eight years ago, and then actually developed the DocuSeries model in 2014. So if anybody sees DocuSeries in the natural health space, if you see DocuSeries anywhere online in the launch model, um, I was the first one to do that with the truth about cancer. Uh, I could go deep if you want. Liam, you tell me how, how far down the rabbit hole you want me to go. Yeah, do you uh, want to you you talk about... Um the results that you've, you've achieved and like for those people who don't know what a, what a docu-series is. So the whole idea for the docu-series came about because I, and no offense to any guests that you've had on, but summits were boring for me at the time. Everybody was just doing Skype interviews and they were doing seven days in a row and they were just doing one interview with one expert um, and it was, you know, Skype or Zoom or something. Then the next day it was with the next expert. And so we wanted a way to kind of step it up and have it be more engaging. So um, decided to do, let's do summit style, but let's do it with in-person only interviews. Um, so my business partner, Ty, um, who I had kind of as the, the investigative journalist, sent him around to the different doctors to interview them. We would do a bunch, we did a bunch of interviews and then we compiled it together into a seven day docu-series. And it was really the same as a summit, right? It's seven days, an hour, hour and a half per episode, a little bit more engaging, a little bit more produced because you know you had a lower third. Um, we were jumping between interviews. So it wasn't just a steady one interview for one hour. We actually changed it by going topic by topic, right? So we, could, we might have five different doctors talking about the same thing. So that was the docu-series. And yeah, I mean, when we launched it, Proof of Concept, early 2014, we bootstrapped the whole thing um, for probably 40 grand all in. Um, and I, I can talk more on that. I think that there's ways to do it for a lot less than that. I don't think that everything should be a docu-series either. I think there's a lot of things that are better summit style. Um, and if you're bootstrapping it, that's one of them. Um, but to back to the docu-series, we, we launched our first one in spring 2014. Grabbed some affiliates on board. Um, we probably did 700,000 gross. Uh, that very first one we launched again in the fall. This time we turned it into an 11 episode docu-series. I was trying to find what was the best length. Seven days, 11 days is what we tried next. I think we did about 1.8. We relaunched that uh, again the next spring. And my timelines might be off a little bit. Um, next spring, I think we relaunched it again to 2.2. Then that fall, we launched a brand new series. This was a nine episode series is what I found to be the magic number was nine days for a docu-series. Um, we did 8.8 .8 million. We relaunched that exact same docu-series six months later to $10 million um, in gross revenue. Um, and what was really interesting about all of this is prior to the docu-series model in the health space, almost everything was buy or die. Right. Give me the money and I'll give you the answers. Give me your money and, I'll, and, and here's my book. Give me the money and here's my DVDs. And I wanted to change all of that up, especially talking about the cancer space. Right. So it, I didn't want to come from a place of give me your money and, and we'll tell you all these solutions. We decided to go, you know, the summit style, which was give it all away for free. And, you know, here's all of our best stuff from all the best doctors. And if you like it, then buy our DVDs, support the mission. And by you buying the DVDs, that allows us to help other people. So I talk a lot of times measuring the success of the launch in terms of dollars, which it really isn't fair because it should be talked about in reach. How many people did we help? How many people got healthy? How many lives did we save by going that model? I talk about it in dollars because it's business and you have to measure it that way. And people that are probably listening from you are also interested in not just helping people, but you got to make money if you want to keep helping people. 
All right, there's uh, there's a few wows in the chat there. <laughs> um, so this is some incredible results. This is probably not typical results for everyone that's uh, watching. You've you mentioned John that you've been in the the launch space for quite some time, uh, and you they are some uh, amazing results. Yeah, there's there's another wow that's been thrown in. <laughs> um, but so when you talk about the the money that you've made, and you talked about what the the most recent summit, did you say 10, 10 million? We did the last, the last summit that I was, that, yeah, that we pushed through, it was the Truth About Cancer Global Quest. I want to say that was the spring of 2016. We did over 10 million on that. Um, now I've since, I mean, people that have worked on my team have done their own docu-series, um, who've launched it out. And I mean, so there's, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of money still to be made in summits and docu-series. The day of the $10 million launch is probably not there as strong as it was before because you know it was new it was fresh nobody heard about it before we're also talking about a a subject matter of cancer which is a lot grander scale it's something that i don't have to agitate a problem on to to sell a solution Um, and that's why i think not everything is made for a docuseries model i think things are made for summits so and then we've done i mean we even did the truth about pet cancer that did a few million um and i since i don't even do docu-series anymore. I don't even do summits. From building that big uh, following on the truth about cancer, one of the biggest things that people were asking about was healthy supplements. So then I launched a supplement company creating healthy supplements. That's what you see up here behind me. So that's my focus now actually is on supplements and I consult other people. I don't even consult. I just have friends that uh, I tell them how to do docu-series and how to do summits to make them successful. Um, not selling anything here. I don't have any program to sell to your listeners. I don't have anything like that. Just freely giving information to hopefully help them get to the next level. See, it's it's people like you, I think, that, uh, you know, you, you've mentioned there that you decided to flip the model on its head and say, okay, well, rather than pay and then I'll give the information, you've just give the information first and then, you know, <laughs> you can pay if you, you, you love it. Uh, and then also now just like paying it forward again, I think that's a really good uh, trait to have as a person and obviously it's it's to bid you well in uh, the success that you've had across uh, your previous businesses as well as obviously this one uh, you've told me is doing well as well so uh, congrats on that one one question that came up from the um, chat was what so if, if you're giving all this value away for free what how are you making the money what were you you mentioned there the, the DVDs is that where most of the revenue came from so it's DVD or digital, right? And that's where all the revenue came from. So ideally, the way that we would do it is if you follow a summit style, seven day, whatever the day is, right? Day one, you get X amount of content for 24 hours. You know, we the way that we did it, right? Episode one would launch on, let's call it a Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. It would run until 8.59 p.m. the next day on Thursday. And then we would... Uh, we would run episode two and and each episode would run for 24 hours. And, you know, we wouldn't even actually put that there was anything for sell on episode one because people, people when they're coming in online, they're looking, they're like, is there something for sale? What's, you know, what, what's the fine print? You know, they're, they're all, they're trying to look between the lines and see what it is. So we didn't even offer that you could buy the DVDs on day one. All we asked people to do was share Hey, if you found this information valuable, share it on Facebook, share it on social media. I mean, we, we've gotten 2 million shares, I think, from, from that very first one. So we did a lot of things differently. We, when it comes, again, to selling online, I think it's if you put all your cars out on the table at first, like I have something for sale, then everybody has their guard up. So consider when you um, are going shopping at Target, right, or Walmart, or wherever you shop, shop there's not much barrier there. You just go in there, you're looking around, you'll find whatever you want. Now, consider how you feel when you go to a car dealership to buy a car and you know there's a salesman that's gonna come out and try to sell you on a car. Your guard's up, your barriers are up, you're not there to receive, you know, a lot of things are differently. So that day one, and I'm probably going way down a tangent, so save me if I go too far, but day one, we didn't offer anything for sale. Day two, we started saying, hey, you know, you can buy the digital version of this or you can buy the DVDs. And we would run day three. And, and again, the promotions, you can get everything, all of it for free, just by tuning in all seven days in a row, you get it all. And, you know, by day five, day six, day seven, people have missed an episode. People have missed a day. 
and they can't go back and watch a previous one. So the only way to get the information is to buy the, the DVDs or buy the digital access, the lifetime digital access. Um, and then you also, you, you touch on some different psychological selling points when you go down this model of giving it away for free and like, hey, just share this with people. Like if you buy it, great. But if not, at least share this with other people that, that might want it. You have people that will buy your DVDs and, and I keep saying DVDs because that's where my head was. I really don't recommend anybody do DVDs, do it all digitally. It's a lot cheaper, a lot less headache, all of that stuff. Um, but some people will buy it just because they want to support your mission, right? So you have some people that buy because they missed an episode. You have some people that buy because they're truly unhealthy and they want to revisit that information over and over. And then you have other people that buy just because they want to support your mission. So there's several different motivators. And that was the, you know, the catchphrase I came up with was join the movement, support the mission, save lives. And that was it. And so you could, you could join the movement and you could just share this. You could support the mission by sharing it or buying it. Um, and there was no hard sell. I didn't have a 20 page long form sales letter. I had a simple three or four page sales letter that looked like a checkout page almost. It was pretty much Here's what you're getting in all the episodes. We're also going to give you some bonus MP3s, um, you know, and then there was an option to get digital or you could get physical or you could get digital and physical as a combo pack. So unpacking quite a lot for people here, and I see that the chat moving about there. Uh, when we've spoken before, John, you've mentioned how important having that mission or that purpose behind what you're doing do you want to just explain that for, for everyone? Yeah, if you're running a business uh, in the 21st century and you don't have a mission behind it, you don't have a purpose, uh, you're not going to make it um, in the long run, first and foremost. But two, I think when you make it more than about yourself, then people feel that, right? I mean, you look at Tom's shoes, you look at, at other things where it's mission based, it's to provide water to, you know, to people in Africa. It's, it's for this reason or that reason. I just think mission based matters. Um, and I think that it, I just, it, it, we need it for our society, right? We're, we're in a crappy place. Um, most of the time, most people are all about the profits are all about, let me make money and I'll damage the earth to do it. I will screw my neighbor to get more money. I'll sell some shit product, you know, just to make some money. And, you know, there needs to be good guys out there that do it differently if we're going to change the direction that we're going. Um, and so I think mission is important. I think it also reminds you why you're doing it, right? It's not all about the money, right? I, I can, I, the, the thousands of emails that we got of people's lives that were changed um, from the truth about cancer, the, you know, just, just all of that. It, it's, you know, whether you believe in karma or not, goodwill, whatever it is, there's just more out there than us. And I think that one, I think that you will be more successful if that is your focus. Uh, one of the questions coming in was like, did you run it as a nonprofit or a profit? And I think uh, it's interesting for people who are maybe thinking of doing their, their summit, whether they think about uh, that mission or that purpose and how to, ex how do they explain that why they're doing this, uh, topic and why they're creating this summit and do people think that it's a it's a it's a charity thing that's a great point that i would talk probably for hours on if given the opportunity i am a conscious capitalist you have to make money if your business is to survive you have to make profits how you make those profits is up to you though so we are not a nonprofit organization. I do not want to be a nonprofit organization. If you have a big mission to change the world, I urge you not to do it as a nonprofit organization because so there's hundreds of thousands of nonprofit organizations that nobody's ever heard about. Why? Because they don't make money. And if they don't make money, then they're not going to survive. They're not going to sustain. The people that are working those nonprofit organizations are working down at the convenience store or other places, and they're not able to put up a put all their time into the nonprofit, it would actually do a lot of good. So we are 100% a for-profit company. Um, now, again, the way that you do it is differently. And I would, listen, I have big goals in life to, to help change the world in big ways. And I cannot do that broke. I cannot do that without money. The more money I have, the more people I can help. The more money I have, the more I can give freely. 
And so as long as I'm getting the money ethically and I'm, 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 I couldn't get it more ethically than give you everything for free and then say, if you like it, then buy my stuff. Can't get it more ethically than that. And I want to turn a profit and understand. I mean, at, at one point um, when I was going for empire stage uh, of growing the business, I had 100 people working for me. So there was 100 families all working virtually that were surviving off of this business. Right. And they're providing for their families. So um, I, I see it time and time again. Before I was in the health space, I was in the personal development space. And you see hundreds of people, thousands of people every year with great ideas, great missions to change the world. And it never happens because they're stuck on not wanting to make money off of their idea. And if you cannot get over the idea that you have to make money and be profitable in order for your idea to spread in the biggest way possible, it's never going to spread. I think that that coming from you, who's obviously had a, a lot of success and a big impact on, you know, well, millions of people, I mean, all those shares and everything that you've mentioned uh, proves, I think, that uh, what you're saying there is is truthful and uh, uh, and and works too. So uh, I can see there's a lot of people agreeing with you uh, in um, the ch chat there. Uh, so for the people who are kind of thinking about whether a virtual summit is 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 something that they should do uh, and they're, they're wondering, well, should I join Virtual Summit Academy and, and go through with, with, uh, with me in that, helping them? What, what would you say to people now considering, you know, you've, you've been doing it for quite some time? What would I say now? <laughs> I think it depends on what it is you're selling. And I think it depends on what you're able to invest. I said before, I don't think docu-series is for everyone. I think there's a lot of people that saw, oh, a docuseries did this and I can make that. And, and they went and made a docuseries around something that they never should have. It would have been much better delivered as a summit. So if you're bootstrapping something, I think, I think an audio summit, quite frankly, is the easiest. Look at what Ocean Robin does over at Food Network. I'm sorry, Food Revolution. Um, he's been doing that for, I don't know, eight years now. Um, the guys, uh, the Ortners over at Tapping Solution, again, I think theirs is either audio only or uh, through Skype interviews. It's super easy to bootstrap it that way. Um, I think it's worth it for anybody to try to, to do a summit or do a docu-series. If you have information that's really of value to give, then I think it's worth doing it. Now, here's the other thing. Here's the other trap that I think a lot of people fall into is you feel like you have to be an expert in whatever field it is you're selling. Quite frankly, I actually think it's better if you are the expert, don't be the expert, number one. Um, and if you're not the expert, even better, right? So my business partner at the time, when I, when I met him, Ty Bollinger, I mean, he knew a whole lot about natural cancer treatments. And I sent him out to do his first interview and he wanted to cut in and, and just teach and teach. I'm like, no, no, no. Don't say a word. You're the investigative reporter. You ask questions. Let the experts deliver the information. Well, why is that so important, especially for you if you're going to create a summit or if you're going to do a docu-series, is you're now the deliverer of information, right? So let's say you're going to do a summit about diets, right? Now you can do an episode on ketogenic. You can do an episode on, ve on vegetarian or vegan. You can do an episode on carnivore. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're a vegan trying to do a summit on diets, one, you're going to be biased when it comes to keto and all the others, but then everybody's going to want to come and blast you as being the expert where I think it's much better to make all the other people the experts and you are the facilitator of the information. So you asked me, do I think it's worth it to do a summit? Absolutely. My, uh, my older brother um, who got me into, into internet marketing initially um, had a friend who, uh, John McMahon, who was suffering from diabetes, 300 and some pounds. And they were like, hey, what should we do? I'm like, do a docu-series about it and, and show John's journey. Um, in fact, I had to get off in eight minutes to interview John for my podcast, but he's lost a hundred and some pounds. And my brother is doing a docu-series. One of my best friends, Manny Goldman, um, big guy in the affiliate marketing space. He launched the sacred plan um, and, you know, did 3 million his first year there. I mean, he's done great there. He's, he's also does the healing miracle. Um, Jonathan Otto, uh, he used to work with us editing our videos for the truth about cancer is doing docu-series now. Um, Brian Bates, I mean, these are all people I know, all people that, you know, I, I would encourage to do it if I think that they have something worthwhile to share. Um, the, other, the other challenge is understanding how much information 
I'm sorry, how much information does your subject matter support? If you have something that's easily solved in 30 to 45 minutes, Summit is probably not the way to go. Just create a digital product and sell it, right? Sell it as an ebook, sell it as an audio, sell it as whatever. But if it's a, a little bit more complex problem or there's more that goes into it, like the Human Longevity Project, where they're talking about living longer, diabetes, cancer, um, talking about all kinds, you know, get rid of stress, healing the gut. I mean, there's, there's a, a million of the docuseries out there now. And those are, those are big enough subjects to talk about them for five, seven, nine days. Then I think it's absolutely worth doing a summit. And I'm going to back up and say proof of concept matters most too. So start with audio, start with cheap, start with just launching it out to a, a couple of affiliates. Don't try to go and, and make all these grand promises and tell all these people that it's going to do all of this amazing stuff because you don't know that it will. And the last thing you want to do is ruin affiliate relationships, promising them a dollar EPC or $2 EPC, and you deliver them 22 cents EPC. And trust me, now every affiliate knows that your launch sucks and only does 22 cents EPC. And now they're not going to support you when you do a bigger launch. So just understand, do it smart. Do your proof of concept. Do it as cheap as possible at first. Give it away and start getting some data back. And then as you get it back, then you can start growing. You can start reinvesting back into it more. Yeah, that's uh, that's a really good point. Maybe maybe figure out exactly what your your core foundation of your your business is. It, it has all the the right elements to succeed. It has that mission. I think that's uh, and that purpose, which you mentioned that there's so many businesses are missing that. And then making sure that it aligns and there is all of those points that you mentioned are are kind of ticked to see that this is something that's gonna work for you and your business. Uh, John, I, I really appreciate you jumping on today. You mentioned you've got a, uh, something else you've got to run off to shortly. Is there any final things that you would say um, to help uh, people that are watching to create amazing uh, summits that have that purpose and that mission and make an impact? Yeah, action over perfection. <clears throat> I can tell you now that the idea it needs to be perfect the idea that you need to do an interview better the idea that you need the best people to interview is just bullshit excuses to keep you from moving forward action over perfection all day long it's how i built other companies it's how i built built that company and the only time my companies are uh, uh, struggle is when i forget action over perfection and we start thinking about making things perfect we start thinking about it needs to be this way it needs to be that way Go to YouTube and look up The Truth About Cancer, A Quest for the Cures. Uh, we still leave episode one up there on for free. It's probably got a couple million views now. Watch that and then YouTube The Truth About Cancer, uh, A Global Quest, and look at the difference between the video quality, the editing quality, all of that. We only invested in to make it better once we were making more money. Um, I'm no longer involved in that business uh, anymore. Anyway, I, I focus solely on the supplement business. Um, but you can go and look. I just, I cannot emphasize enough action over perfection. Everybody gets stuck thinking, well, what about this? What about that? Should I do it? Are people going to judge me? This, that, yep, all that shit's going to happen. Everybody's going to judge you. Everybody's going to say stuff. There's going to be haters out there all the time. Uh, you might be thinking right now, well, do I invest in this program now? Or maybe I wait a little bit and go check out some other stuff. That hesitation is what will keep you unsuccessful, right? So just take action. And the faster that you take action, the faster you do something, the faster you find out if it was right or wrong. What, what, what surprises me the most is when people sit around and think about a solution to something for days and weeks. And it's like, well, shit, if you would have just made a decision, you would have known if it was a right or wrong decision within days or weeks rather than just thinking about it. So um, a whole lot there that I could talk on for hours as well. Just take action, move forward, and don't worry about it being perfect. You can always fix it later. You can, this is the internet, man. Nobody's going to remember what you did six months from now anyway, right? So put out whatever you want to put out. And if it does good, then reinvest and make it better. And that'll be your better one. But take action. Don't, don't, don't wait. Uh, I love that, mate. Just go take action, make things happen. Uh, otherwise, you know, I love the, the saying, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take being a, being yeah. a soccer player. <laughs> um, and it's so true. If you're a striker, you want to score goals, well, you have to shoot. You have to take action. Otherwise, you'll, you'll never score. So um, I'm, I'm a believer in, in that too. John, mate, appreciate your time today. Uh, fantastic with your success. Um, and congrats on your current 
business and, and your success with, with that organics. Cheers, John, mate. Take care, buddy. Uh, and I'll let you get on with your day. Uh, but thanks for coming on and sharing all of that. Yeah, thanks, brother.